Let's talk about polymers. Get out your science notebook. Here's the essential question. What are polymers? Well, quite simply, polymers are just very large organic molecules made of repeating patterns of smaller molecules. Take a look here. This is a small portion of a polymer. And you might notice that there are some repeating patterns in there. These smaller molecules that make up the polymer are called monomers. Now, monomers don't have to be the same in a polymer. There could be various forms of monomers as long as we see repeating patterns. So how are polymers made? Polymers are made through two important reactions called polymerization reactions. These reactions take monomers and combine them together to make large polymers. Addition reactions are very simple. Two monomers come together and they're just able to stick to each other. Condensation reactions are very similar as well, but in condensation reactions, something usually gets sloughed off. Here, for example, is a condensation reaction. Notice that these two monomers combine together, and in order to do so, water, a water molecule, gets sloughed off. It's a byproduct of this reaction. Other byproducts might be alcohol or ammonia. Now, there are two groups of or types of main types or groups of polymers that I'm going to mention in these slides. The first type are natural polymers. This is where biology and chemistry meet. These are the carbohydrates, the proteins, and the nucleic acids. And we're going to go in depth on the types of monomers that make up these polymers and where they come from. We're also going to mention synthetic polymers. These are the various plastics, PVC, rubber, and nylon. We won't go into the intensive chemistry as we will with the natural polymers, but they're good to mention. The first natural polymer we're going to talk about are carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are polymers that provide nutrients to the cell of living organisms. An interesting thing about carbohydrates, they're typically made through photosynthesis, and so they have to be obtained by animals from plants and other living organisms that are able to produce them through the process of photosynthesis. Now, carbohydrates, the monomers of carbohydrates are called monosaccharides. Saccharide, by the way, is another name for sugar. So carbohydrates are also known as sugars. Some examples of these are sucrose. Take a look here at sucrose. This is like common table sugar. Sucrose is made of two monosaccharides. One of them is glucose and another one is fructose. And repeating patterns of these attach make our sucrose or sugar molecule. Cellulose is another example of a carbohydrate. Cellulose is made of these monomers. You can see this monosaccharide right here in that repeating pattern. Cellulose is often found in wood or paper. One that's not shown here are starches, such as what's found in potatoes. Another type of natural polymer are proteins. Proteins are polymers that are, ex are very important building blocks of all cells. Now, proteins are made of monomers called amino acids. Here on the bottom of the page, this is an example of a generalized amino acid. The reason it's called that is because it's made out of two functional groups, amines and carboxylic acids over here, thus amino acids. Now, these various amino acids can be different depending on the different types of side chains that are attached. Now, if you take a look here, this is a generalized form of a protein. Don't be confused by these colored spheres here. These colored spheres are actually these amino acids in their various forms. They're just very overly simplified. Some examples of proteins you might be familiar with are antibodies in our body that help, help fight infections. Hemoglobin is our red blood cells. Enzymes or keratin. Keratin is the protein that helps our fingernails and our hair, or if you're a bird, they're in feathers. Collagen is found inside our muscles and insulin. The last type of natural polymer are nucleic acids. Nucleic acids are polymers that are found primarily in the cell's nucleus, and they contain the genetic information. Nucleic acids, the genetic information, are often used to build proteins, as we talked about in the last slide. Now, nucleic acids are build, built from monomers called nucleotides. Here you can see four different nucleotides in their skeletal structure. Thymine, adenine, guanine, and cytosine are four examples of nucleotides that make up nucleic acids. You are probably familiar with nucleic acids. The two of them are DNA and RNA.
Here is what I see in biology class. It's a very overly simplified version of a nucleic acid, such as DNA. And here these lines represent these more complicated molecules, just simplified. In biology, you probably did base pairing where you attached A's and T's and G's and C's. Those are the various nucleotides that combine together to make the rings of DNA. But DNA is very complicated. It's made of multiple patterns, multiple patterns of monomers in order to make uh, this double helix chain of polymers. All right, now we're going to switch gears and talk about the synthetic polymers. These are plastics. Now, we're not going to go into the in-depth chemistry. Just know that these plastics are made of very long chains of repeated various forms of monomers. What you should be aware of, though, is that many plastics are stamped with identification codes. And depending on the code, lets you know what that plastic or that synthetic polymer is made out of. You're probably familiar with PETE or polyethylene. That's a very common plastic found in water bottles and other jars and trays. HDPE is a little bit more high density. It's a little bit more thick, uh, a little bit more able to withstand harsher punishments like milk jugs um, and other things that are able to hold chemicals and shampoo bottles. PVC, you might have heard of PVC pipes used in tubes out in the garden or to allow water through them. That's polyvinyl chloride. LDPE is low density polyethylene used in like tissue overwrap. It's in squeeze bottles, or if you ever buy a soda, it's found in the, the rings of that hold those six packs together. Uh, polypropylene is another example here, or polystyrene is styrofoam. And then there's the catch-all, the other group where ABS is found, or if you like 3D printing, PLA is found in that group as well. But these plastics help us recycle them to become new things and lets us know what they're made of, what types of polymers, polymers or monomers that they're made out of. Now, how do our synthetic polymers made? This is an important concept you should know. They're made from crude oil. Now, crude oil extracted from the ground is made out of just organic material, various hydrocarbons. And we're able to separate those hydrocarbons through a process called fractional distillation. What they do is they put a crude oil through a furnace and it boils off. And the different hydrocarbons boil off at various at various temperatures, and they're able to slough off the various things that they need. Now, when we want to make plastic polymers, typically naphtha is an important chemical used to make plastic polymers. All right, that's the end of our notes. This is a good opportunity to take a moment to review the important highlight key terms and review those key terms, ponder and ask questions, seek answer to those questions, and summarize and answer the essential question. Good luck.